Hi everyone, it's Carissa at Small and Scrappy and I have a process video for you today. Uh, this is my challenge sample for the Pear Tree Cut Files um, DT challenge for May and you'll have seen the cut file in my intro, it's this uh, the Create Yourself Happy title um, and I've actually done something a bit different, I made a decorative pennant banner for my, um, well, essentially to hang up in my craft room, or that's what I'm going to be doing with it, but it's a decorative piece with no photo, uh, so a little bit different. So as you can see, I've started by drawing around um, a banner which I already have, and it's a a canvas thing which is used uh, was well, intended to display um, enamel pins which I collect, and I have another one um, up and full already. But I've used that as my uh, sort of template for my outline, and I've started with this paper from the Vicky Booten Color Study Collection. I just love the gorgeous purples in there, but also the sort of the washed out and distressed effect. I just love that about Vicky's collections. Um, and what I'm intending to do at this stage um, is to turn it into a giant shaker. So I have pulled out a page protector um, because due to the size of the um, of the banner that I'm going to be cutting, um, it's actually too big for any of the acetate that I have, um, which um, I've only really got A4 pieces, but, but I find page protectors work pretty well for this sort of thing um, anyway. Um, you know, if you've got one lying around that's um, a design you're not going to use, if you, you know, if you don't do project life anymore or, or something like that, or you've got one that's a bit damaged, actually use them for shaker pockets because I find they work um, just as well as, as acetate and actually you get a bit more flexibility with them because it's a slightly softer plastic. Um, so anyway I've drawn around that, I've cut it out and um, now I've moved on to the actual cut file. So I've cut it three times, the, um, the main part of the cut file, the uh, positive I think you call it, in um, in white cardstock, I use uh, American Crafts Precision cardstock, and I'm just ink blending um, uh, some blues onto the top and bottom of that. I didn't have much of a plan for this. I just sort of wanted them to stand out a bit more, have a little bit of a pop of colour in the in the white cardstock. So I'm just blending uh, distress oxide. Uh, chipped sapphire at the bottom and then I'm using salvage patina at the top. Um, I don't use the um, the inside letters um, so it is just that that little pop of colour on the border of the um, letters themselves but I think it really makes a difference on the end product. Um, so the inside letters I am using I've cut from another sheet of colour study paper um, and it's got a sort of a blue and and again sort of different shades of blue floral on a white background so that's what I've used them for. Um, so moving on I'm just sewing together the main banner pieces um, and you can see this is on a different day because one I've changed my jumper um, my head is constantly in the shot again, so I do apologise about that. Um, and I am wearing my curl turban, so it must have been near bedtime. Um, but yes, yeah, sorry that gets in the way so often. It is uh, something I want to work on. Um, so yeah, just sewing that uh, banner together to form the shaker pocket. Um, I used my same machine for this as you can see. I could have done it by hand but it would have obviously taken a lot longer and probably been even less neat. So and yes now I'm putting the sequins in. So that is a pack of uh, I 
don't remember the brand off the top of my head and I'm not able to read it from here but I've used the whole pack and I think it looks great as you can see some of those white ones got a bit staticky and wanted to stay in the um, pot but I got most of them out in the end so I'm just gluing the the white um, cardstock where I did the ink blending um, um, on the cut file I'm just backing that onto a black cardstock offset which I also cut um, again just to help it really pop off the background off the um, purple there and I use Tombow glue for that uh, Tombow Mono Multi um, I, it, that tends to be what I use for all my cut files and um, paper embellishments so now I'm just fill it, I'm putting in the uh, the insides of the letters which I've cut from that floral paper, and I'm popping them all up on adhesive foam just again to give them a, a, another little bit of dimension and interest. Um, I think it's a really good effect, especially with the black offset behind it. And I don't make you watch all of that because it's um, it's a little bit fiddly to cut all the tiny pieces of uh, adhesive foam for each letter. Um, but I will show you again once I've stuck those all down. And there we go, just like magic. So yeah, I really love the effect that um, that creates the three layers of the cut file. Um, and now I'm moving on to embellishing. Um, so sticking with the colour study collection, um, this is finally the perfect project for me to use that pencil pot which everybody loves. I've um, I've been saving it for the right layout or um, um, decor piece as it turns out. Um, and I've also added the paintbrush and a floral cluster there and I divvy over that butterfly for ages. I do like it, to be fair, even now I look at the banner hanging up and I think, oh, should I put that butterfly on? Um, he moves around quite a lot um, before the end of the video, but he doesn't end up being stuck. Um, so again, just uh, gluing down the uh, the main cut file now that those three layers are assembled together um, and again just using my Tombow for that works um, perfectly for sticking that to the um, to the plastic held it down for a minute just to make sure it um, did stay while I was placing all the other bits tucking them in And there's that butterfly back, but I promise you he doesn't stay. Um, so what I'm doing now is adding the um, the dowel and the string to the top of the banner to make it able to hang. Um, and I've actually just pinched this from the original banner that I drew around to get the shape. Um, I didn't have any others around and I can replace that some other time. It just made sense to me to use something that I, I knew would be the right size and um, the right amount of string. Um, so before I do that and seal up the shaker um, part of the pocket, um, I'm just adding a few fussy cut vellum circles from the um, the speciality paper from Colour Study. Um, I absolutely love that um, vellum and I'm eking out every little scrap of it. Um, I've even cut uh, kept like large sections of the grid just because I love the foiling on it. So um, I will still get a few more projects out of um, Colour Study using those. Um, but I just thought they added an extra little something to the shaker pockets. And I've stuck over that loop for the dowel. Um, and I had this spare strip of the of this pink ge geometric mosaic um, 
paper again from Colour Study and I just thought I'd pop that up there to um, not cover up the stitching from the loop because I stitched through it but I just thought it looked nicer having that strip at the top than, um, than it just ending. Um, There we go, popping down through. I did, um, I cut that section out, but I did actually mark the string um, where it needed to start wrapping back around the uh, around the rod. So um, that was easy enough to know how much I actually needed. And I think that is just about done. Yep. So that is my project. I do consider adding the, uh, a few more um, embellishments, those crayons you can see to the side. Um, I decide not to and um, same with the infills of the letters and also that branding strip I had at the end there. So that is my completed project um, and it again it was my sample for the Pear Tree Cut Files DT Challenge for May. Um, it is still open, I'm putting this video up very late in the month but it is still open so pop over to the Facebook group, um, grab the file and join in. Thanks for watching, bye!